forget, you can hear the full-length, longer version wherever you get your podcasts. Hello, in my excitement, I've spilt my water. And I say excitement genuinely because... You know, we've interviewed zillions of people on this. I don't really often get that excited, but I'm excited, genuinely, to talk to Simon Le Bon. Well, that's a huge compliment. Thank you, Rob. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm very happy to be here. I'm excited too. Well, as excited as I can be at yeah. this time in the morning. Well, then let me put something to you that I've wanted to ask for a long, long time. The reflex. Mm. Quite often in that song, you say, to reflex. To reflex. Yeah. What's oh, that I about? Don't know. Yeah. What's that about? Oh, that's an inch. Uh, that's that's. You've, you've, I've never thought about that before. That is a result. Isn't Nobody's it? Nobody's ever said that to you. No, no, no. Everybody's always said to me, Get "All right, in. Simon, come clean. What's the reflex about?" And I always say, "I don't explain lyrics. Yes. I write the lyrics. That's the explanation. You have to figure it out for yourself." Sometimes it, you say the, the reflex, reflex, but a lot of the time you go to, to reflex. reflex. What are you northern yeah. all of a sudden? To reflex. To, to, exactly. <laughs> That's what it must be. Um, it's funny. It's funny now. I, now you mention it, I, it, it happens a lot in there, and I think it's just you've never noticed that. No, you've no. never noticed it. I think. I think live. I usually sing "de reflex, de what? reflex." Well, that's even stranger. It isn't, um... De reflex. I that's when I'm feeling a bit American, you know. So yeah, yeah. Dem boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, listen, I'm, I'm thrilled because, you know, we said earlier that's, on that you get asked the same questions and you must no, be And that's a new one. I'm an absolutely, nobody an said absolutely that. absolutely fresh take on a massive Duran Duran song. I am, as we speak, uh, currently filming a new Gavin and Stacey uh, special. <laughs> oh, how wonderful. In Cardiff. And Great. this is my day off. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. This and, is your day off? Yeah. And I, you know, I said to you... Let's go I, down the pub, innit? <laughs> we'll go down, Simon. You and I will go to the pub. I'll tell you for why. I would love to talk to you about your musical output over the years. Mm -hmm. That's me doing Uncle Bryn. I told James Corden that I was going to be interviewing you. And he said, OK, here's what you've got to ask him. He yeah, said, look... We've just seen the Oasis announcement. There's a band that literally yeah. were not speaking to each other mm -hmm. for years. Yeah. How have you guys managed to be on good terms for so long? Okay. And he has a follow-up yeah. question, yeah. but we'll come on to that. Okay. Well, th th there's the simple answer to that, and, it, and, the, and the most honest one is the fact that we split everything equally financially. Yeah. We split the proceeds. There's no, there's no, there's no Lennon and McCartney in this group. There's no John Bon Jovi, who gets all the publishing. Yeah. Um, we split regardless of one's input. Right. Because we figured out very early on that that's the way to keep a band together. And who contributes the least, and you secretly resent? Um, it it would be very easy to. I, don't, I actually don't, to be honest with you, I don't actually think about that. Um, that's, why it's not still, an issue. that's why you're still it's, together. It's just not an issue. Mm. And I don't think that I actually, it would be, it's so hard to, it would be so hard to define it anyway. I mean, traditionally, it would be Roger. Because in, yeah. in the writing process, drummers are never recognised. And that is so wrong. Drummers are huge contributors to, to, to the writing process. We write together. We write in a room together. Even if I could, even if I I'd managed to come up with something on a guitar at home, which I which I probably do about once every sort of fifteen years or something. <laughs> you know, right. yeah, it, yeah. It, it's it's um, <laughs> it, even if I do that, it's it's still the band that turns it into a song i t yeah. i came up with a, quite a few songs in the early days which ones i came up with the chauffeur oh I like um that. waiting for the night boat yeah. careless memories they were all songs that i brought with me to the band right i read um, that you arrived with a book of poetry well i had that as well yeah. that was it was not it was it was lyrics not poetry but they were they were lyrics to songs that were in my head which didn't yeah. have tunes but so a lot I of your lyrics could... are peculiar yeah 
what the hell is the union of the snake? Exactly. We, we know it's on the rise, exactly. but exactly. what is it? Well, that's the whole point. It's it's a, it's that it's a, it's the point of the song. It, here's a great example of it for me. The best example of it is "Hungry Like the Wolf." Yes. Why hungry like the wolf? Why not hungry like a wolf? Why is why do you think? Okay. Okay. I'll tell you why. <laughs> oh. Because. Hungry like when when the song title is Hungry Like the Wolf, it raises a question in your mind, and that is which wolf? <laughs> yes. You know? Okay. And that's that's the simple answer. And I've always I've always liked lyrics that made you want to find out stuff. Well, I never questioned that in the same way you'd never questioned to reflex. Yeah. I've always accepted the wolf. Mm -hmm. I've Great. I've never asked the question oh, you which didn't? wolf. Oh, no. Okay. I failed. No, you haven't failed. <laughs> I'm a hungry boy, hungry boy, and I'm hungry. And speaking of that song, you've just been uh, sort of rather viral singing it outside or at some lovely fancy restaurant. Are you not aware of this? Oh, no. It's I Spain do or remember. Ibiza or somewhere. Yeah, so There's a guy playing it and you're in, singing it. Okay, so, yeah, this is this is the, the fabulous Juan y Andrea on the island of Formentera, mm. which is the, the, the boomerang-shaped island at the south end of Ibiza. Right. And we, I, it's the most wonderful restaurant. You sit there with your feet in the sand, eating salt baked sea bass, and it is like being in heaven. You, they've got, they've got just the just the location of it. They, it's it's surrounded by grasses. Um, they've got these this awning, this big tent awning, and it's just one of my favourite restaurants anywhere ever. Mm -hmm. So we're at this restaurant. And um, there's this guy playing music, and the waiter comes over. He says, "The um, the, the, the chap, I can't remember his name actually." He said, um, "He's um, asked if you'd like to do a song with him." <laughs> and I've gone, Boom. you know, and I and I said, oh, "I'm just here with my family having lunch. I think pro I probably I don't want to embarrass myself, um, but but thank you for the um, for the invitation." Anyway, is your voice get, always get, ready to go? By the way, get to yeah, it is. Get to okay. the end of. Get to the end of yeah. um, of lunch. We're walking out, and he starts playing "Hungry Like the Wolf," but he doesn't start playing "Hungry Like the Wolf." Like he plays playing the wrong chords, and that that triggered something in me. I thought I've got to put this right. I've got to tell him what to do. And I said, oh, "Excuse me, hold on, guys. I need to go and have a have a quick chat with this guy." I said, "If you're gonna play it, you've got to get the chords right. It's not C." It's G at that point. And he went, oh, right. And he went like this. And I said, oh, okay. And I just started singing it with him. <laughs> and then, and then, and then, I, then, and some, some Russian holiday maker with a, with a, camera phone yeah. video the whole thing stuck it on youtube i've seen it from two different my, angles so really, a few people really, were filming really, it really and my manager is not happy with it why she doesn't like what i'm wearing you might be wearing that T-shirt. I've, see, I've t seen you wearing that T-shirt a lot, by the oh, way. Oh, right. If this is my... Well, yeah, I, I like this T-shirt. It's a nice T-shirt, but I've, I've, I've seen it a lot. I'm going it a little bit more because... All right. It's what, I've got a few... Is that a ragged tiger or a leopard? No, it's, um, it's, it's a leopard, okay. yes. And it's, um, and it's made by a very good friend of mine, uh, Patty Palazzo, who has a company called Punk Masters. All right. Um, and she uh, and she's just she's a one woman t-shirt uh factory and okay. she and she makes all, uh, most of the t-shirt most of the printed t-shirts i wear is the ones that she makes you just tuned in this is qvc our guest today is uh, yes. simon lebon and he's selling this lovely <laughs> I'm range I'm, I mean, of t-shirts but, but i think she's a fantastic she's she's her I, her ideas are brilliant okay so that you they don't have t-shirts don't have to make sense I think a lot of a like lot of the your time, lyrics. Well, exactly. Well, yeah. there you go. That's yeah. how I think you've just you've got to get people's imaginations going, and yeah. and and people people get people to go. Ah, oh, I think I know what that's about. Yeah. If, it, if I can get people doing that, I feel like I've done my job. James Corden's follow-up question, All right. which would be, what's the closest you've come to splitting up acrimoniously? as opposed to just going off to pursue different things. Oh, I, you know, it happens on a regular basis. Does it? Yeah, it's very hard to pick one sort of... I mean, there, there's the, there was early on pork pie throwing incidents in the, in the back of a tour bus where 
there was arguments about which record company you were going to sign to, and then there'd be, there's been countless, countless musical differences. Yeah. I mean, that's what being in a band is all about. With the record company thing, that was before you'd done your first big deal? It was, well, it, yes, it was, it was about who we were going to do our big deal with. With whether because it's going what, to be, you had all sorts of well, heat was it going to be was competing? it going to be Polydor, Polygram, yeah. or was it going to be EMI? Right, you know, and, and there was there was there was a there was a, a camp for one and a camp for the other. Weirdly, I was not in either camp. I was just like, yeah, whatever. Were you being the Derek Smalls of the band, the lukewarm water? Yeah, that was I was keeping well, I, everybody I was, happy. No, I was being that I really can't be asked kind of person in the band Is because that right? to me it was all the same anyway. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't. They were just big. They were just big, big institutions, and we had to pick one or the other. Let's talk about Halloween. Uh, not yet. No, come on. Simon's noticed that the band uh, are claiming <laughs> Halloween <laughs> is their own. So we've spent no expense. We're not claiming it as our own. That's what Nick, I've like been Nick told. Rhodes claims it as All his right, own. Let's do the Halloween Wait a minute, bit now. Wait, is that a is that a Halloween pencil sharpener? It, no, it's a, it's, it's got, a, oh oh well, love it. It's, it's quite nice. It's a jack o' lantern. That now. I There's know. our pumpkin there. Now, the reason for that is that Dance Macabre, which came it's, out... It's not a pumpkin. It's a jack-o'-lantern. I, I, I just love the words jack-o'-lantern. Jack-o'-lantern. It's a great lyric. I've got a, it's a great thing to put in a song. I've actually got a, a line in a song which talks about our jack-o'-lantern hearts. Oh, I like that. Our yeah. jack o' lantern hearts. I haven't, hearts. I haven't used it. I haven't, I haven't, the song's never been released. It might, it might come out later. Our jack o' lantern hearts. Yeah. In need of some spare parts. Oh, look at that! <laughs> come on. I'm not going to use it. You'll, 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 you'll want publish. You'll want and, publishing. And so, yeah, and in perpetuity. In perpetuity, yes. <laughs> our jack o' lantern. I'm going to put it in his head. Our jack o' lantern hearts in need of some spare parts. Mm. The horse is before the carts. And it's, I, I think we should stop this rhyme scheme before, I we, hit, apologize. before we hit farts. I apologise for my farts, <laughs> was my next one. <laughs> Let's address this pumpkin jack-o'-lantern yeah. in the room. Yeah. Dance Macabre came out yeah. last year. There's yeah. a kind of bump, pumped-up version now yeah, with some it's, new it's tracks. A, well, it's, it's, you've, got a, you've got a slight issue with the Halloween album, and that is it's, it's all good for October, but come November the 1st, it's done. And you've mentioned to me before we began recording that this is more of a Nick Rhodes it's thing than a Simon much, Le bon it, thing. Nick, he's he's very Nick is into the dark side. He's <laughs> <laughs> he's you know he's nighttime. I'm daytime. Um, so we we're very we're very we're polar opposites on 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 this one. And and I I, I realised that we this came out of a Halloween show that we did in Las Vegas three years ago mm. and. And then Nick and John went, oh, Nick, it'd be great to do a Halloween album. I thought, yeah, okay, here we go. Um, so he picked <laughs> all the dark, go. all the all the all the darkly themed Duran tunes that could possibly be fit into the under this umbrella. Things like Waiting for the Night Boat. Why? Because night's got the word night in it. Anyway, um, and we put it together. And I have to say, I am quite impressed by how it's turned out. More, I was very, I've been very cynical about it, and and very sitting on the fence about it, but it's turned out a lot better than I had imagined. It's quite hard for you, though, because you're the guy that's got to sing them. I do, and, I, and there were some songs that I just said, I'm not doing that. Right. I'm not, you know, and for, different, for, for various different reasons, I, mainly because I knew that I wasn't able to do the, the right job with that song. It wasn't the right song for me, mm. and it should be for somebody else. So, and that has happened. So this year, there's a, there's this kind of repackaged version yeah. with some new tracks, and my favourite is a cover of a classic ELO track. Oh, I mean, and then that's what brought it to life for me as well. Evil Woman. I am so excited about this song. This is, I mean, I, I couldn't I couldn't believe that nobody's done a, a that there hasn't been a successful cover version of this song since the well, original. Well, there are not many successful covers of, of any ELO songs that I can yeah, think of. Which and, is... and it's such a catalogue. What I love about your cover is that you've 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 garnished it with some Duran Duran, but it's yeah. still essentially the song that we know. But you've upped things, and I, I really like yeah. it. It's Good. still recognisably. Yeah. It's, it's a it's my kind of. Have you heard the remix of "That Was Your Mother" by Paul Simon from Graceland? I'm not sure I have. There's an album of remixes. Yeah. Oh, and this again because it keeps the melody and everything. It's recognisable, but it's that got tune. 
Oh, okay. oh yeah. check it out. Anyway. I will. But I was going to say, I've got a theory that if you're doing a cover, you can only move 10% of sort of melodically <sighs> from the original. <laughs> Any more than that, and people go, nah. Yeah. We love working. We And making a new record is such an important part for us of the whole keeping the band's fire alive, yeah. of keeping that band's fire stoked. If we if we let that fire go out, the writing one, then when when you go when you go out on tour and you just play a load of old songs, it it doesn't feel so good. And I can imagine what it, if that if you hadn't written an album for 5 or 10 years maybe. And we will be going for the next 10 years if we can stay alive obviously. Um that if it's 10 years since your last new music, you're going to feel even a little bit more sort of... It's, it's, a, it's a feeling we don't like. Yeah. We like to have something new yeah. when, we go on, when we go on stage. I can vividly remember, mm -hmm. I think I was on holiday in Torquay, and I can vividly remember opening Smash Hits, yeah. and there was a picture just of you on one whole side page, yeah. and you were wearing a jacket that had some kind of different coloured stripes, quite warm colours, uh -huh. stripes. Yeah. And you had a look, and I'm going to compliment you here, and it doesn't come easy to me. <laughs> you had the look of a young Elvis. Oh, yes. And I remember looking at that picture <laughs> and going, I would love to look like that. Aww. Why can't I look because I didn't. Why can't oh. I look like that? Now, that's what, the kind of thing. It means a lot to me, but yeah. you must go, well, yeah, whatever. Well, I, it, I, I, I kind of I have sympathy for you because it's, it's not that I thought I looked so great and that you should think that you, you, you could look like that. It's wanting to look like anybody else. Because you must have had that yourself when I did, you were younger. I did, of course. Younger. I wanted to be David Bowie. Bowie. I mean, I, t I did everything I possibly could to look as much like David Bowie as possible. And I never did. I'm too broad. My face is too wide. My hair wouldn't quite stick up in I the same way. I loved the width of your face because I have an equine horse-like face. Ah, I yearned ah, for a face for a with football the width. face. The width of Le Bon. Ha! <laughs> That's so funny. I did. Um, I genuinely, you know, genuinely that, did. That, that Elvis look? Yeah. It's what Ger Gerard Mankovic, the photographer, he called it that spoilt mean look huh? Simon you've Simon you've got that spoilt mean look that Elvis had I'm going to bring that out so you yeah. were aware of that yeah, Elvis kind much. of thing I think yeah. the hair was kind of up yeah. and there was this kind of thing yeah, well, well, we, Duran Duran and the band who learned to smile and at the same time sucking their cheeks in, you've got, to, you've got to know that. What were the poses that you would, when you started to do sessions, you'd, I don't remember you smiling that much. We, I remember no, you kind of... No, we never did. Kind of, kind no, of, no, we had a smouldering. We show, try, can you still smolder? We tried smolder? to smolder. I'm not going to do it now. Yes, you are. What's right, the matter with you? camera over there. There we had our, what's his name, the photographer? He did the, he did the cover of, I forget his name. Anton Corbin? No, 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 no. Um, no, he's, he's um, he was it, oh, he did the cover of the something I should know record. Do you remember that yellow, blue, and white cover? Yeah, but me that, in a yellow shirt oh, with a oh, pair yes, of Ray Bans yes. on my. Thing. I had that single. Right, so he took that photograph. And I can't remember his name. It's really annoying me. But he taught us our angles, and this to that camera yeah. was my angle. It was that, like that. And I still use it. <laughs> <laughs> I it, think something's never changed. You, you, yeah. I always smile in photos. Yeah, if, I've, if I've I don't smile, to. I look simple. Oh. Honestly, <laughs> I, no, honestly, I look, I look either clinically depressed right. or there's something not right. Well, you see that the reason we 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 didn't smile a lot was because we were sucking our cheeks in for all our photographs. And, and, and until we learn to be able to smile and suck our cheeks in at the same time, and which that, is quite a skill. Like? I'm not doing it. Yes, I'm you not, are. No, I'm not doing it. Yes, you no. are. Come nah. on. You didn't want to do the, the, I know, the smolder but, and no, then you but did. I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to give up. Duran Duran's greatest trade secret away. No way. <laughs> I've never, ever done this before with any of my guests, but I want to do it with you. Because this is my original <sighs> copy oh my bought goodness. when when it, when it came out. Oh, right. That's this the original like, yeah, one. I know. I know it is. I can tell because it's got this this dimpled um, paper, which was, mm -hmm. which was only 
the first. Is one. that right? Oh, uh, yeah. The more recent ones, they're flat, opaque. All right. So this has got the coined paper. Oh. And that was amongst my downstairs albums, which Ooh. means it has a higher status than my upstairs albums, which oh, are sort I, of I stored it. away. I get this it. This is totally in a collection of albums about this, this wide, is... Simon. Now, you, there's, 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 there's a little sharpie sort of... Well, yeah, I, think you, I think you can guess where this is. is going, can't yes, you? Yes, well, I, I, you don't even... But before you start, right. put something that has a bit of meaning. Okay. I once gave a beautiful print to Tom Jones, with whom I have worked several times, and I said, write something nice, and I left it with him at his house for a few days. Okay. When it came back, it said, to Rob, all the best, Tom. Yes, I get it. I, get I it. want more I get than it. that. I get it. Okay, okay. I've got a good one. <laughs> if you've just joined us, Simon is signing the original copy of the Rio album, purchased by myself, probably at Woolworths in Porthcawl, when as a teenager I would envy his wider face as opposed to my own horse-like features which regrettably did not extend beyond the face. Le bon still in the act of signing. He's finished. Now, see if you can make sense of that. He passes the record to Welshman Rob from the Welshman in me. That's lovely. Do, do you know that my grandmother's name, isn't it? So my grandmother... Yeah. My grandmother's name was Eva... Philothea Elton Jones. Seriously? Yeah. What the hell did she Elton come Jones. by that? Elton <laughs> Jones. Elton Jones. That was her surname. That's the Welsh Elton John tribute I know, act, isn't really. it? Really? Well, can you? I can, she was. She actually spent most of her time in Manchester. Um, <laughs> I, could, I do remember a conversation with her. Oh, have you heard this terrible man who's stolen my name, Mister Elton Jones? I think it's called. So, yeah, because of course he would have come up. He while thought, she was, he, she how thought funny. He, he, his name was Elton Jones. Oh. Yeah. Simon, what a delight to talk to you! I was excited about it, and you have not disappointed. Mm. Good. And yet, I feel the interview is. We could go on for hours, really, oh, couldn't we? I have we? got someone else coming oh, in. <laughs> OK. I've got a lovely story. We had this amazing um, bass player, Wes Way Miller, who this was in the days when John wasn't in the band, in, in one, one of our sort of, one of his hiatuses from Duran Duran. Wes Way, Way Miller was this lovely American guy. He's not, he's not around any longer. But anyway, he'd, um, he told us a story. He'd been driving down Pacific, Car Pacific Coast Highway and then suddenly he hears the siren and sees the lights in his mirror. <laughs> Pulls over. Policeman walk, gets out of the car, taps on the window. Wes weighs, he winds down the window. And uh, the policeman leaves in and says, I've been waiting all day for an asshole like you to come along. And Wes says to him, well, I got here as quick as I could. Oh, what a line. <laughs> what Didn't a line. Save him. Didn't save him. It should have done. Yeah. If that policeman had any integrity, yeah, really. he'd have said... Or sense of humour. Yeah, he, he would have given him a high five and said, be on your way. Yeah. I like that. Um, Simon, thank you so much. Um, Dance Pleasure. Macabre. This this is our Halloween special, by the way, this episode. It's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. think how happy Nick will be. He will. He'll love it. He'll love it. He'll, he'll love it. Real pleasure. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I don't want it to end, but it has to... When he arrived, Simon said, Yasmin sends her love. Just think about that. Thank you.